Hello everyone, my name is Arun. Welcome to my channel. This series is a tutorials on plotting using Matplotlib in Python. <coughs> now, in the last tutorial, we were able to generate these two curves. These two curves have different x-axis, y-axis ranges, but same x-axis ranges. So, if you were to plot them together by superimposition, one of the cur the curves with the lesser magnitude will be squished up, so the aspect ratio will not be preserved, and the curve will the, cur the curves will look a little bad. And now, by creating um, by creating multiple axes, by creating multiple axes and twinning them up, we were able to get the curve nicely with uh, <coughs> we were able to get the curve nicely uh, and neat and neatly by preserving the aspect ratio. Okay. And now what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, make sure that we have put the grids all over it and uh, label the axis, label the axis, make some colors to these axes so that they'll be <coughs> well distinguished from the e well distinguished from each other. So this is how the plot, this is how the program initially looks like. Um, so if there isn't any error, this is how it looks. This is how the curve looks like in the beginning. So what I'm going to do is, uh, okay. So what I'm going to what I'm going to do right now is that we're going to add one one feature after the other, and I'll walk you guys through <coughs> walk you guys through what's happening. First, uh, after drawing the plots, we're just going to extract uh, a curve an axis handle out of the out of these plots. These axis handle will help us to place legends proper. Will help us to place legends properly. So what I'm going to do is that this axis handle I'm going to take right, take it out and name it as curve one. The axis handle for axis handle for this plot over here. I'll take it out and I'll name it as curve two. And uh, this comma is important. This comma is very very important. Okay, if you don't put that, this will throw an error. I mean, or not over here, but after here, it will throw an error. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a list using these axis handles. And then what I'm going to do is that let me just draw the uh, legend with uh, with the hand with the uh, axis one handle, axis one object. Now if I draw this, this is how it will come turn out to be. I just get only one legend, and that legend corresponds to the curves made by the uh, by the uh, the handle ax1. That's it. That's it. If I want the curves made by ax ax2, I will not be able to get it over here. The reason is because ax1 and ax2 are independent of each other, except for the except for the uh, co common x-axis they share. Other than that, these curves are independent of each other, so they won't have a prop. I mean, they don't. They have the properties only for themselves, but not for the properties of others. So that's why it is. So if you want to get the ac both the axes, okay. So instead, if I, say if I put axis two, I'll get the same result. This will just give me the curves corresponding to AX2, but not for the curves corresponding to AX1. So if I put both, if I put two of them together, this is how it will turn out to be. You'll get two uh, separate ax uh, legends, which I don't. Which I sometimes it might be okay. Sometimes I don't want this kind of a thing. I want a single legend with uh, all the fig all the figures. I mean all the uh, labels put properly. Color. I mean. Values labels put properly. So, for that, I'm going to use this. I'm going to slightly use a compl slightly complicated method, and this is what I'm going to use. Remember the uh, I mean curves list we made just made just now. We're going to pass that over here, and then we're going to use the, this generator loop, and we're going to create. We're going to get the labels out of out of each curve. So this will return the red. Re this will return sign for the first curve and sign h for the second curve. Second curve, and this curve will have sine in the in the first and the sine h in the second, like that. So th this is how it's going. This is how it's going to work, and this will work perfectly. And now, if I run this out, check this out. If I, now, if I run this, I'll get a single legend with uh, with the uh, labels for all the curves, regardless of the I mean, for all the axes together. Okay, and likewise, like what I can do is I can actually uh, actually do this for axis axis two as well. And I'll get a similar result, except that this is this box corresponds to axis two, so it will just be located in a place where uh, the most of the curves from axis ax two will won't intersect like that. Now, if I put both, if I put both of them together, if I put both of them together, you'll get two axis, two axis, uh, two legends again. <coughs> so it's always better to just stick with one of them in these cases. One is more than sufficient. If you put two of them, it will still work. It will still work, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to label the x-axis 
x axis so usually uh, one, 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 just like the legends over here one might think one might think that uh, I can use either a ax1 or ax2 the thing is if, only if I use ax1 this will work properly and now if I look at it <coughs> this a a handle ax1 is able to label the x-axis with a handle slash value and with a red with a red color this red color is due to is due to the fact that it go it was able to get the color hand i mean color handle from this co color value from this curve one handle so this this is actually very useful that's why we it's better to tear extract them out because they will be useful everywhere and now instead of ax1 instead of ax1 let's say i put ax2 over here and uh, i'll copy this and paste it over here paste it over here and try this out i would expect this to be in uh, i mean blue color but if i run this you see the label does not come out the label is does not even getting printed so what this might look uh, nice but it actually doesn't work so you just have to keep in memory that the ax2 has no property control over x with re with uh, respect to with res with respect to uh, label and co and color label co label uh, grid and color okay so that's what you have to keep in mind okay say so next thing is this so i have to, I, can, I cannot use ax2 so but if i, I can use ax1 and it will work fine and and uh, but for y la y are labels both of them will work perfectly because yeah, the y axis are indep independent of each other for both of them so if now if i run this out check this out the y labels are actually colored properly and they have different colors now it's indicating that this curve I mean the sine curve is correspond. Uh, I mean the the axis dictating the sine curve is on the left, and the axis dictating the hyperbolic sine curve is on the right. So this is coming out perfectly. And now what I can do is I can actually go on to get the ticks, y-axis ticks, using this option tick underscore params. This will set me. This will break the axis. I mean it will give me the tick tick marks along the axis and it'll work out fine. And if I run this, there we go. Now the axes are actually colored. Colored uh, both the y-axis are actually colored with the uh, and the text because of the text. So this is actually, this is actually working fine as well. And now what I'm going to do is uh, is that I'm going to activate the text for y-axis using ax1. And uh, this is no big brainer. This is very easy. Now it turned out to be fine. And now what is surprising is that what is surprising is that judging by the experience we had uh, experience we had in the past in, in the above cases you one might think that ax2 might not color this up but when i run this turns out ax2 can uh, let's see okay ax2 does didn't color this up ax2 didn't color this up the ticks are actually gone okay the, uh, okay sorry ax2 does not uh, does not work out work out over here sorry ax2 gets uh, works at some other place so ax1 ax, AX1 is again the one that works over here so uh, so it's fine an alternate approach to coloring the x labels over here is that instead of in the in while set we're using set underscore x label and set underscore y label i can define the color over here otherwise what i can do is that i can write ax1 dot x axis dot label dot set color and pro and set inside that you can put the color over here this way you're actually being very specific you are being super specific about specific about it. So here instead of here you just pass multiple arguments value directly. Here just you're passing them one specifically. So either way you can work work it out. Which are, I mean you can do either one of them. Both of them will work perfectly. And then what I'm going to do is that now I'm going to set the x sticks using axis one. And when I run this, the x sticks turn out to be fine when I use axis one. But the but uh. As per experience, if I thought AX2 should not work, but surprisingly it works. I really don't know why it work, why this one works. In all the above cases, AX2 did not work, whereas here the AX2 did work, and that's why it's kind of like surprising for me. So I can use either one of them, either one of them, so it'll work. And now I can actually set the Y text, Y text, and break the break the axis. Earlier I was just giving colors to colors to the text. Now I'm actually breaking the text directly. 
using numbers one y numbers one and two and if i run this up now you can see both the both these axes are broken accordingly and now now the last part will be to uh, put a grid now since as i mentioned earlier ax2 does not have any grid properties i mean so i have to use ax1 to get the grids so if i use ax1.grid and i put a color to it you will get a you will get a proper grid over here there we go we we'll get a proper grid over here and if you don't put a color it'll just get a black grid or black color grid over here and if you can set the color grid color as well not a problem okay and now you suppose if i want the grids to be uh, made from uh, with the axis too this is what i have to do i have to run these three lines of code first i in activate the colors activate the grid from axis one and then activate the colors uh, grid from axis two and then i switch off the y-axis grading of axis one and now, now if I do this, this is this is how I'll get. Now I'll be able to get a grid corresponding to. I will be able to get a grid corresponding to the second second axis. Okay. So this way, this way I'll be able to get grids. And now the one question that you might one question that you might ask me is, can I have both the grids possible? It, yeah, it, yeah, you can. But the but the thing is. The thing is, this is how it will look like. The colors will be messed up. Colors will be messed up over here. So usually it's not recommended. But on the other hand, it is possible to make sure that uh, both the grids are both the, I mean, the grid lines are nice and coherent. And that is by making sure that the sp that the ticks we have over here are even. So instead of uh, um, if I put eleven ticks over here for right now y numbers 2 instead of the uh, 7 now check this out these sticks turn out to be these sticks turn out to be okay and I didn't activate the grid yet so if you just activate this grid over here now if you look at it look at it now the grids are actually in uh, are they in co cohesion no Okay, they're actually slight. They're actually slightly off than I thought. Anyway, the thing is, if I just I just have to play around with the play around with these values to make sure that uh, the grids are the grids actually coincide coincide well. Okay, now this is how you actually beautiful uh, make uh, make sure that uh, a curve a plot like this, which has multi uh, meter need and this is actually will be very helpful because in the future there will might we'll might come across we will come across situations wherein you have to break the plots into the figure axis uh, i mean figure object as well as the axis object and go and tweak the settings uh, go and tweak the settings manually so this will come very in handy reasonably handy in the future so this is actually good to know and now if i run this i'll re 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 place, place this to seven this is okay. This is okay, and now I'm just go and this way I can just proceed. Uh, proceed further. Now this way my all my uh, my plots are going very well. To make grids using axis I mean axis two axis two. So this is how we go about with it. This way we have written a program to make sure uh, to make sure that the plots turn out to be perfect perfect in these kind of cases filling everything we want access colors grids lines and everything okay but that's all i have for you all in this video thank you for watching and i'll see you all next time in another interesting video till then take care